So the last thing to do on the user settings page now is to change the user's password. So we're just going to jump into the ASP.NET Core project and add the ability for the user to change the password. Uh, with that being a small task, we're also going to clean up some of the uh, roots in the controller actions and put them into um, a class so that it can be shared among both projects instead of them just being strings. Uh, so let's get to it. So let's open up the Facetto Word server project um, and start by getting this user password change done. So we'll just open up the API controller. Now in the last video, uh, somebody rightfully pointed out that we actually forgot something or I actually forgot something. Uh, you'll notice in the email, when we change the email, uh, we do the check and then we flag if we've changed the email, but then I forget to actually even check it here. So whenever we edit anything, we'll get a verification email. So this should have actually been an email changed as a logic check. So that's just one small thing to make sure we add there and not forget that. Um, give us more room there. Right, so what is the shortcut to collapse everything again? I always forget the shortcut. Um, toggle outline expansion is just MM. Collapse a definite MO, I think it is. Control MO. There we go. So we have everything here already. Um, we just need to add one more function. So I'm just gonna be slightly lazy and just copy and paste the entire update user profile um, and paste that into here. Um, and then with the new one now, we'll call this update uh, user password. Uh, and then we'll say password update. Attempts to update the user user's password. The model, the user password details to update. Return successful, otherwise there, so that's fine. <clears throat> uh, now we need one more new API model. So we have update user profile API model. So this is update user password API model. Um, if we jump into the uh, API models and we have update Profile details, we'll just copy and paste that and call this update user password API model. And then in here, rename that. Don't need a constructor, don't need helpers. Uh, and this is more like the description of this one. The details, so we'll kind of copy the comment to keep it similar. The details to change for a user for a user's password. And then public properties, uh, we want old password, new password, or current password, new password. That's all we really need. So I'll have current password, new password. We don't need verify because the client side will do that first. The user's current password and the user's new password. So that's a user, update user password API model that we'll pull in. So we've now got a new function we can hit up that's API user password update. Um, and then we have um, the same thing really. We don't need email changed. We've got a list of errors. Uh, get current user, we still need to do. So we still get the current user. Uh, if we have no user, we still reply that we have no user. So that's the same, just general steps. We could also potentially wrap this further, the more we use it and work, we've got repeating bits of code like this, but that's not for this video. Uh, and then we do the work. So this is update password, um, which to be honest, we can get rid of all of that. And we can just do, uh, well, in fact, you don't update the password there. This is save profile, we'll do update password here. So now the only difference is instead of updating the user, we, uh, what's it called? Change password, maybe? Change password, there we go. And it'll want the user and then the current and new password. So that'll just be model.current, model.new. And there's nothing different. Um, we don't need to send a verification. So this one line of code now will change the user's password or if not, return the errors for us as the same identity result thanks to the, the user manager. 
So that's the update user password done anyway. I think we'll just leave it there for now. Like I say, we could try and refine this more, but we'll just leave that out. That's fine for now. There's not much repeating code. Um, so we can call that in the next video for the WPF app. So let's just make sure that builds. Which, there we go, here it does. Now the only thing I want to do here is refine these API routes here. And I want to put them more into a dependency injection style uh, class so that we can replace the actual URLs of where the calls are being made. The only problem with this is the, I like to keep the attributes on the actual, um, the root tag here, so it's alongside the, the action, so it's nice and obvious. Um, but the attributes need constants. So there's no really easy way to do it because the um, the roots need a constant string. So you can't provide it through DI. Um, so the obvious thing we do is to provide just a plain constant class like we'd have, say, public static class API roots. And then you just have public static st string my root, whatever it is, uh, equals some root. And then here, instead of that, or we could do this one for get user profile. So this could be get user profile. And then in here, we just have API roots dot get user profile. Um, and then you're still going to complain about that. Oh, yeah, sorry, constant. And the reason for that is the attributes are compile time things. So we can tag it that way. And, and then all we could potentially do, if we ever wanted to replace these roots as maybe, I don't know that you can do a constant without defining, you know, and then define it elsewhere. No, obviously not, because constants need to be compiled. Um, so we're really stuck in that situation where these roots are going to be fixed. Um, so, I mean, that's where it is right now. The other thing we can do is go to the actual um, startup of the server. Uh, yeah, startup. <clears throat> and then when we're adding MVC, uh, we can now add, um, sorry, and use MVC. We can add roots here, and these can be um, pulled from DI. But then the problem there that I don't really like is we have one set of things here for using roots. And then we have these that don't have any roots tagged to them. So for simplicity for now, I'm going to simply have a static class called API roots that we pull from that's shared in core. Um, but that's the reason we're not putting it into DI as such, which kind of means we're, we're stuck on having those, those URLs for now. Uh, if anyone's got any suggestions on that, by all means, do comment and let me know as well, because I'd be happy to, you know, consider what we do there that might allow us to get that interdependency injection while still trying to maintain some really obvious link to where the details are coming from per action. Um, and I know we could potentially do, you know, like here, name of, and then, um, and try and you know, do it that way, but I still think that's quite messy. So anyway, let's get to uh, core. Have we got anything for just API as such? We've got API models, async, DI. Um, I think we might need a new folder. Uh, let's do, I don't know, I don't really like it, roots. Um, call it roots for now, and then just make a new class in there, API roots. <clears throat> and we'll just chuck that in. And then this will be the relative roots to all API calls in this server. The the root to the get user profile um, API method. Um, and then now we'll just do it for all the other the URLs, which we've got quite a few of, not a massive amount. Uh, so we've got API register login. So we'll do. Uh, register and then really it's a case of uh, you know a lot of this is just copy paste and, and tweak a couple of values so and then this is api roots dot register uh, and then we can just do 
API root dot login and just type login because we know what that'll be. So it's a bit mundane. So all I'll do is uh, type through this. And to be honest, you can just fast forward this, but I'll probably just fast forward this in the video so you can just see me typing them all in. Uh, there's no need for you to, you know, watch every one of these. So that's the ones done for the API route. Uh, so now I'll just look for across the whole project uh, if we have any other routes, <clears throat> which we do in the home controller. So I'll just go ahead and do these as well now. In fact, the first thing I'll do here as well is we've got API routes um, as a class. Th uh, this is now, it's not a technically API routes, it's web routes because not all of them are API. So I'm just going to actually rename these to API. Uh, I don't know whether to call them API register or just put them in an API roots and then a home roots, but I kind of want all the roots in one place. So we'll call this API register. Yeah, then we'll do that. And then we'll rename this to uh, server. Uh, well, no, we'll, the thing is, it's still API. Um, it's just a slightly weird name because it's not technically an API call. This one, it's simply a web, web root call. Um, so no, we'll call this web roots. Uh, no, actually, screw it. We'll keep it as called API roots. We'll keep that there. We'll have another class called simply um, just web roots, uh, and then we'll do the same as this. The relative roots to all uh, server web calls are all. All normal non API calls to the server. I'll do call us web roots and then we'll do the same. We'll have them in here. So that's what we'll do. Uh, so we have the root to the create uh, user method. So this will be create, or in fact, we'll make it better user for us create. And then we'll just call it create user. And then it keeps it similar to the API calls. And then this will now just be web roots or whatever we called it. Yeah, web roots. And then include that in there, dot create user. And the same again, we'll have private. Private's now just a, that was a test thing. We can delete that, clean that up. Logout, uh, we'll have, just call it logout. And then this will be called logout user. And to be honest, it's not really user specific then, it's so we can just call it logout. Um, login, same again. Login. Um, and then test again, which just a test for loading that stack and go. Uh, remove all the unknown bits. Okay, let's just do a sanity check now. So we have the web roots, commenting correctly. I can improve comments and names maybe, but they are what they are for now. Web roots and API roots. Uh, the home controller's got them. API roots has got all the API roots. Uh, and the API controller has got everything in, including the new core. Do one last check for root. Oops. And yeah, you can see there's no other roots there. So really, that's that's it for this video. Um, we've done the update user password uh, function and we've cleaned up the API roots and we've fixed one bug with the send email on the update of user profile. Um, so as always, again, if you want to leave comments in the video, you've got any questions, that's what these are all about. It's not just follow and, you know, don't reply. You can you know, let me know your thoughts, let me know improvements, let me know I've done things wrong. Uh, it's all about the, you know, the sharing. Uh, I do have a Discord channel now as well. You'll see a video a few ones back about the link to getting on Discord so you can have more of a, a live real-time chat and discuss more things there as well. Uh, and then in the next video, we're now going to jump to the WPF application and link all these new calls back in and update the user's password.